Hi friends. So uh, this is uh, second week of uh, uh, the NPTEL course on risk-based engineering, and the uh, module is uh, probabilistic uh, methods in uh, risk-based engineering. Because uh, the probabilistic methods as well as deterministic places uh, methods, they play a vital role uh, in shaping the uh, risk-based engineering. So uh, today, our topic is determination of applicability of distribution. Uh, you must be getting a sense now that how much efforts are placed on uh, data collection, data, data organization, and data modeling, uh, and, and the applicability of a distribution, uh, to be precise, uh, st statistical distribution plays a vital role. Uh, because if the model is uh, uh, not good, then or the approximations are not good, then results also will not be good. Uh, sort of parameters also will not be uh, as representative as it should be. So, uh, in this uh, in this uh, lecture, uh, we will be discussing uh, the method of point estimation. Um, in previous chapter, we have uh, discussed uh, the deterministic, uh, uh, not deterministic, uh, it is a, a continuous distribution and discrete distribution. So uh, now, having, set, having studied the distribution, now let us focus on um, how to, in fact, uh, there also, we, we definitely discussed about uh, how to identify the right distribution for the right uh, data source and uh, type of data. Uh, but here it is sort of uh, for we are going one step further uh, that is um, a point estimation, uh, point estimation of the data. Uh, we all know that uh, most of the data in the world they carry along uh, with them uh, the uncertainty or uh, there, is, uh, there is something called uh, aleatory tree component of uncertainty. So, uh, so, so here in the probabilistic method uh, uh, it, is, uh, it is a way to identify the point estimate as well as the confidence interval. So in this, uh, in this uh, lecture, we'll, estimate, uh, we'll try to uh, understand the uh, methodology or step-by-step -step procedure for getting closer to the right type of distribution. Um, and then uh, even before we end the chapter, uh, we will be giving a model, it's called Bayesian updating model, uh, which will tell us about the uh, not only point estimate, but uh, giving upper and lower bound. Uh, that means the uncertainty associated with the point estimates. So let us start uh, on uh, this, uh, uh, this lecture. Uh, uh, the, there are basically uh, uh, methods which are there, the source of type of data. As uh, it has been mentioned uh, and touched upon this aspect, that the source of data, like uh, and their nature of uh, handling or uh, parameter, engineering parameters um, is given, then uh, there is a one step, uh, one step uh, solution to consider certain type of distribution. For example, if the, uh, if the lathe machine is working on, uh, uh, working on um, uh, you know, uh, uh, developing a shaft or manufacturing a shaft, uh, now if we, uh, in principle, there should not be much different if you take a reading from one side to other side, but there will be a measurement error. There will be uh, there will be physical uncertainties. Uh, there will be uh, you know uh, tools uh, backlash and all those things. They will introduce definitely some randomness into the measurement. So here, if you see the uh, data uh, dispersion uh, will be around a uh, mean value. So and that is where. Uh, you are you are able to decide uh, that okay it is a it is a uh, normal distribution or maybe log normal distribution okay but suppose if you are developing a reliability database and if the data are coming from different sources uh, that means they have been uh, in a way seeing different conditions and if you want to estimate one parameter let us say uh, failure of pump to start okay so now for this failure mode um, failure mode uh, we'll have data from different sources but there will be some variance and this can be captured very well in uh, log number distribution 
um, it, it is become uh, by default a practice to, uh, to use log normal distribution. Exponential distribution we use uh, where in time domain or uh, uh, spatial domain <coughs> or time domain, let us say, so spatial domain will take later, time domain, uh, data, uh, the events are happening. And now these e events uh, are, you know, uh, are, are nice. So which distribution it should follow? Uh, there can be a, uh, or you know, we are having some live test data. And is this data have to be R nice. So um, uh, typically the practice is to use um, viable distribution uh, or uh, exponential distribution. And uh, suppose if we are modeling the piping defects uh, uh, in a pipeline uh, during surveillance program and there we get some data. So this data might follow the Poisson distribution. Then again, if I go one stage ahead, uh, if we have discrete events, uh, like you know, uh, you are doing experiment, n number of observation, and out of n number of observation, uh, sub x number of observation will, will take us to some solution or probability, then binomial distribution. Because here we require combination of component failure. Uh, so so uh, generally, uh, uh, the statistician or the domain experts, they have idea. So this is first stage of source of data and type of data, uh, you know, where we can approximately, um, or, you know, we can start with uh, this consideration for uh, selecting a distribution. So this has become our first point. Now, if I go to the next step, then uh, this is probability plotting. Probably plotting I have discussed in my previous lecture also. And uh, yeah, here, this becomes more, one more step, probably uh, uh, a, vali uh, a validating step for the previous step. So what is happening is, now you have data, you assume certain distribution. So why, why don't you plot on the probability paper? So uh, for each distribution, it, can, it is very easy to uh, construct a probability paper. So probability graph, I would say. So for like for exponential distribution, uh, normal distribution, for uh, viable distribution, or uh, give, uh, name the distribution and you can create the probability plot. Now what it means is if you plot the data uh, whatever you have collected and if it is showing a straight line that means uh, the data, the line represents the data okay? and it follows that uh, distribution. Now line uh, data following the uh, uh, line representing data for that we have regression model which we'll see later on. But as of now, the, we got a straight line uh, through this and then we feel okay this is the distribution one more stage we have gone. But then uh, further you have to do on uh, when you want to draw point estimate and all that. So you have to have some analytical techniques. So analytical techniques there are the uh, chi-square method is there. Uh, then there is a viable distribution, as I, as I said, versatile distribution, and I'm a fan of this <laughs> distribution because, you know, you get uh, very close to the uh, whatever your solution space. Uh, now, uh, because uh, in Bible, uh, I, when I say, say this, beta is equal to 1, it is exponential. Even if it is 1.2, 1.1, 1 1.9, probably it is better in, uh, in the interest of the analyst to uh, given the time and uh, other resources, uh, go, go ahead and start with the exponential distribution. If the beta value varies, uh, beta value comes from the gradient of the line, slope or shape parameter, so which is beta. So uh, 3, 4, uh, if the beta value is 3, 4, 3 or 4, sorry, uh, then, uh, then it is, uh, then it is, uh, uh, you can assume that it is a normal distribution, okay. And then finally, uh, one has to perform a regression analysis. And for this, um, uh, you know, this uh, uh, where, where you uh, one places the data, linear model is considered, and in that linear model, how the data fits and uh, the coefficient of correlation will tell us uh, that, okay, uh, whether uh, your data is uh, in agree, agree, agreement. Or even, even the chi-square distribution when we are using, chi-square distribution, uh, 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 normally it is not discussed, but it is a, uh, uh, it is a wonderful distribution wherein the assumption of the, is there that where the data follows exponential distribution for, for, uh, for getting a better idea, chi-square distribution can be used if the uh, index is uh, 17 is a critical threshold, you know, um, or better, then we can think, okay, it is following the 
uh, uh, the data is following the uh, distribution chosen. So, uh, we, ha we have seen the, now the question comes is uh, we require uh, point estimate. So, uh, uh, so, for that one requires statistical estimation of uh, parameter. Okay. Um, it, uh, there is one, uh, one very good uh, uh, philosophy in statistical or estimation procedure in, uh, in uh, uh, statistics and probability. Um, whatever I am calling mean, whether it is a true mean or not. Because uh, as, the, uh, uh, as, the, as the environment changes, environment includes people, um, the data, the uh, you know, arguments, or the uh, you know, population size, uh, all these things changes, the parameter itself changes. So it is better to say that whatever estimation I have given uh, through an estimator uh, uh, you know, uh, for the population. So, uh, this is a uh, here we have uh, a theta cap is which is nothing but a estimator of theta that means our interest is mean or failure rate but we are we are giving the, uh, theta cap and how we do it uh, how how it is interesting uh, to learn about it we'll see in the next slide actually okay so uh, uh, there is a very very uh, popular concept in statistics uh, expectation of you know uh, we say I have this data but this data is based on the ex expectation of number of observation from a population of theta okay so uh, this this uh, thing it gives us a space uh, to tell that okay, my estimation uh, estimation or estimator theta cap is giving a value of the theta so I am not saying this is the actual value so uh, when we say theta that means given the environment uh, size of the population and all this is the best value that is derived here okay so uh, for that just to see the, uh, say, see uh, uh, how it works uh, let us have uh, one uh, uh, probability density function f x theta theta is the parameter of distribution it could be lambda it could be uh, any other parameter so uh, let us start with this the random variable uh, normally random variables are uh, uh, you know denoted by capital X and it can have uh, many values x1, x2, x3, x4, x, xn. If theta is the true value or ideal value of the parameter, if theta is the true, true value or uh, ideal parameter then certain conditions have to be met. Then the estimate obtained from the single valued function uh, that is h x1, x2 uh, will be st uh, statistical st estimate for theta. Okay? So, uh, hence, we, we can say that this estimate will be, will be expectation. It is expectation of the uh, function uh, uh, x1, x2, x3, x4 and uh, pdf of, uh, and up to xn. Uh, this brings in concept of a bias, you see. Um, because a bias is taking the value away from the uh, um, true value okay so therefore the estimate theta obtained from the population is nothing but an estimator of theta it is nothing but an estimator of theta as there are many biases or causes that make I discussed just now about this biases I said environment and all those things uh, and make it prohibitory to obtain the true value of theta so that means unless until I know in uh, theoretically uh, uh, there is a uh, true value of theta uh, then, then I can say, okay, my estimation is about theta and true value is with coming with the, uh, so unless until the bias is uh, removed from the uh, original value of theta, I will uh, uh, I, I, not get a um, theta cap. Okay? So, let us see here. Uh, so, uh, theta cap is equal to expectation of a distribution of a comprise of x1, x2, x3, x4 observation. Uh, and we have uh, is equal to theta. So, theta cap is expectation is equal to theta. Now, theta cap uh, is having a value uh, if I if I take my theta to the uh, left side then a some residual component is left which is called beta. Uh, beta is called the bias as we have discussed. So, the estimator should satisfy the following condition. That means probability of h minus theta should be 
less than the bias uh, is equal to 1. Okay? So, this is the theoretical uh, projection of how we deal with the estimator of theta. That means, uh, the theta is the parameter of distribution, theta cap is the estimator, there is a bias. So, okay? so theta cap minus theta, uh, the theta cap is equal to uh, the distribution value minus theta and that gives you a bias that is residual uh, and then finally limit of n tends that means sample size uh, tends to infinity uh, then definitely we will have complete spectrum. So, minus theta uh, uh, should be less than the bias and that is a condition uh, probability should be 1 probability should be 1 then only we will call it is a estimator. Okay. Now, uh, there are two common procedures for, uh, for, for statis statistical estimation. So, one is called method of moment and second is called maximum likelihood estimation. It is basically we are moving from one step to another step where we are trying to ascertain that we are pretty sure about our um, uh, distribution. So, let us say mean is given giving you 1 upon n. Uh, n, n, uh, n uh, summation for, for n 1 to n n and x i and that will give me a, uh, average that is x bar x bar of our mean value of a parameter x. So, this is called first moment of the uh, parameter. The second moment of this parameter is s square the variance. So, uh, here it is 1 upon n all of us we have studied uh, here and uh, uh, then then the deviation from x uh, x to x bar and then uh, uh, squared them uh, adding 1 to n which will give us the value of variance. Now, uh, this is called second moment. So, uh, okay, x and x bar can be used as a point estimate of distribution uh, mu and uh, mu and variance x bar or standard division since s bar uses the estimate of x bar. This estimate is biased and this bias can be removed by multiplying a square term by n. So, as I told you a bias has to be removed. So, that bias uh, it can be removed by n. So, that is why in s square we would, have, we would have been always wondering why this term n upon n minus 1 you know. So, why uh, what we are telling is uh, that uh, uh, variance can be defined by 1 upon n minus 1 okay, uh, summation of i is equal to 1 to n x minus x bar whole the whole square. Because the first observation can, can be one, uh, one observation can be uh, are, uh, left independent and then other observation for the, uh, removing the bias from the uh, distribution. Okay. So, uh, now uh, we, we will see uh, the maximum likelihood estimation um, procedure. The uh, estimation is based on PDF that means here we require a uh, density function of the population uh, and the parameter of the uh, population that is the uh, theta value. So, uh, here uh, we have uh, some, uh, this, uh, this thing comes visualize there is a testing going on uh, the random variable is x and giving out some values x1, x2, x3 it could be time to failure, uh, it could be any other value and there are uh, this uh, thing uh, population comprises of n, uh, n experiments or n test. Uh, this information can be characterized by as we know um, uh, that is PDF of x i theta where theta is the parameter of the distribution like lambda you know. So, if the likelihood function is written as, so now we are writing a likelihood function that is the what is the likelihood of this parameter is approaching the real value. So, a likelihood function is can be written as um, uh, L is indicates the likelihood uh, function and then x1, x2 and xn are the observation, theta is the parameter value and it can be represented by i is equal to 1 to n and uh, uh, the function is x i n. Uh, probably if you would have um, or we can take up this, it is called joint probability distribution function. Okay? So, uh, all this x i value, theta value and uh, so we will see that this part. 
Okay, the max, maximum likelihood estimate requires determination of an estimator theta, that is estimator such that likelihood of x theta k is more than or equal to L x i theta k. Okay, so uh, this is how it uh, makes the uh, distribution or uh, likelihood function. Now. Uh, uh, we have to maximize this function. Um, in optimization, we use maximization, minimization. So, you know, if you do minimization, we'll come to the lowest value. So, del len of, uh, len of uh, xi theta uh, divided by d theta, del theta is equal to 0. This is the condition for um, obtaining the uh, maximizing, maximizing function. Now, uh, let us take example to understand it better. In this example, the exponential distribution has been taken as a case study and then we are trying to estimate the uh, likelihood of uh, this or estimator of uh, the it's a function is lambda. So, uh, parameter for this uh, uh, exponential uh, distribution is lambda. So, we are trying to estimate the true value of the uh, parameter. So, uh, likelihood of T i lambda that is this function is equal to i is equal to 1 to n and lambda is now, in joint probability, uh, there will be n values, n values will be multiplied. So, just to get a joint probability density function, okay. So, this is the only, uh, this is the only a new concept that is coming in uh, here. Uh, you can see uh, I, I, I is equal to 1 to n uh, multiplication, uh, the symbol is there, and lambda into exponential lambda T i. Uh, definitely, we will get n number of times lambda value and then uh, exponential terms are added up. So, minus lambda i is, uh, i is equal to 1 to n t i. So, that means it is summation of time into multiplied by lambda that will form the exponential term into lambda n. So, that will give us likelihood of this. Value. So, now taking if we take further to further solve it, if we take natural log of uh, on both the sides, then what we get? We are in, in fact, we are trying to uh, uh, solve the uh, problem. Uh, so, uh, so we get len of or uh, natural log of L is equal to n into len natural log of lambda minus uh, because this uh, bracketed term is a constant term. So, minus lambda n i is equal to 1 to n t i. Okay? Now, if we uh, differentiate both the sides, okay? so we get del uh, natural log of the del lambda with respect to del lambda. Uh, lambda. So, we get n upon lambda minus, uh, it's, these are simple mathematics actually, it does not require any. So, uh, i is equal to 1 to n and uh, summation of ti is equal to 0. Okay? So, that means it should be 0. So, then only we will get the likelihood estimator. So, when we solve the equation, we get the value of lambda k uh, is equal to n upon summation of, uh, if you remember or if you recall, um, uh, uh, lambda value we had calculated and this provides us estimator for lambda. To check this estimator, uh, we how to check it? Now, at next point, when we, uh, second time we differentiate, uh, it is a derivative, it will not be 0, it will be negative or what. So, let us see if we check it, whether it is minimum or not. To check that this estimate lambda, that is lambda k is indeed maximized, we can go for second order, second order derivative. That means we will differentiate one more, once more. So, del 2 len in uh, divided by lambda delta 2 is equal to minus n upon lambda square, which is less than 0. Okay? So, that means lambda is clearly a maximum likelihood estimator for, uh, for a exponential distribution. Okay? So, this is we have maximum likelihood. Now, this is a very interesting Bayesian estimator. It does not provide estimate of mean value, but it provides the estimator of um, uh, even upper bound and lower bound. That means it falls in the uh, category of not only point estimate, but it provides the confidence interval also, which is the next lecture. Okay? So, but here I am discussing it because we are talking about point estimates and data collection and how to model the point estimates. Uh, this plays a very important role. So, uh, Bayesian estimator uh, is basically um, 
of uh, works by conditional probabilities. If I know certain thing, uh, if I have certain certain thing, and I want to uh, uh, infer from that, and if I have one more example earlier, um, uh, which is which is also authentic, then I can use these two information uh, and join it or integrate through um, mathematical approach uh, using the conditional probability. We use uh, this approach in our day-to-day uh, -day judgment also. If I have this and if I am shown this also, then I can take some decision. So, so the information which is there, let us say I, I want to estimate the value of pump failure rate. Now, um, uh, my, my pump uh, start-stop uh, 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 the operations are not much. I have very li little data, okay? And uh, 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 then, uh, but then uh, the generic source, uh, international or national source, it has got some data, but I cannot take data direct directly because it may be wrong, it may, not, it may be right, it may not be right, wrong. But then uh, one part is the logical explanation and second part is I should be on a very sound footing that okay, whatever data I had, I have used them. So, so for that, the priori is a generic value, let us say. It is given in some uh, database, 1 into 10 to minus 3 per hour, per, uh, per hour. okay? Now, um, I have my own experience. That means I have oper uh, operated this bump and the failure rate I get is around, um, you know, some uh, two failure in 100 hours. Obviously, the data is not sufficient. But uh, the situation demands or the regulatory demands, you use the information in a more, uh, you know, uh, more accurate way. So. Um, okay, I'll say I use Bayesian updating. That means it is combining these two sources of data, these two sources, that is my own source, we called evidence, you know, or and the priori is the generic source data coming from outside. It could be some other plant also, it could be some uh, data source, database also, and I am updating them using conditional probability, okay. Uh, we will see the mathematics in the next slide. And I get the posterity. Posterity is nothing but uh, I have obtained this uh, this thing method and I have obtained a posterity uh, probability density function which is lambda u updated exponential minus lambda u t. Now, if we see the how this mathematics operates, let g lambda is, is the prior distribution. That means the distribution which is coming from generic source and f t lambda is the conditional probability of random variable t given lambda, okay? And uh, uh, PDF of t lambda is the joint probability of uh, random variable t and lambda. Hence, if I have to get my t lambda, uh, the, my formula is, uh, that is conditional probability of conditional, uh, if the conditional probability of t given lambda, t i, so let's say, is this much, okay? Then f t is the marginal density function of a random variable t. Okay, now if f lambda t joint posteriori, uh, posteriori distribution of lambda given t, if I have to estimate uh, f lambda t joint probability density function, then according to Bayes theorem, the posteriori and priori along with evidence are related as follows. So g lambda t, g lambda given t is nothing but um, conditional prob probability of uh, a distribution of Ti given uh, lambda and G lambda, okay? So, and then divided uh, this Ft is, is a, uh, this Ft is a, uh, you can say, a normalizing parameter, okay, here. So, this is the model for our uh, base estimator. Uh, in when we when we uh, study probabilistic risk assessment, we'll we'll use this method for estimating a parameter because there it is we are working on the data. So in this lecture, we have seen assessment of applicability of a distribution, various approaches and type of data. One was there, graphical approach was there, analytical method of moment, maximum likelihood estimate. So these are basically estimating the um, uh, point estimate of um, you know, and Bayesian. Uh, Bayesian estimator, it falls uh, in point estimator also, it falls under confidence interval, which will be the next lecture. Uh, thank you very much.